We're live. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Cinetrop Calls Music and Film Brazil 2020. I'm Mary Jane Marcassiano, programmer of the series, which we started in 2009 to showcase the best of Brazilian music documentaries. This year's virtual edition is co presented with Brazil Summerfest, the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies at NYU, and additional support from the H Campos Group. Thank you, Petra Pula, Omar Dojere, and Elio Campos. I'm very pleased to be welcoming the director of Where Are You, Jao Gilberto, George Gachot, who is joining us from Zurich. If you haven't seen the film yet, you can watch it on Cinema Tropical um, until tomorrow evening. So uh, George is no stranger to Cinema Tropical. Um, he's part of our family now. In prior editions of music and film, we've shown three of his documentaries, uh, all incredibly beautiful. Rio Sonata on Nana Kayemi, Music is Perfume on Maria Batania, and Osamba on Marcinia Davila. So welcome, George, and thank you for joining us today. So I thank think you. we met in um, at the premiere of Osamba, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Mary, for, for, for inviting me to this, uh, to this panel. Um, yes, we met in Rio uh, for the premiere of Osamba in the Samba School. Uh, Villa Isabel was full of people, and then Martino was there, Martino Davila, and we were showing the the the, the film to the um, to the to the people from from the favelas and from from the school from the summer school, which was a quite uh, impressive moment. So uh, when I remember those moments, I, I I said to me, oh, you had a very nice uh, traveling through the music and the world of the Brazilian music. Yeah. Yes. I think we're both um, coming to the category of big fans of Brazilian music. <laughs> and um, so that's what intrigues me about this new film of yours, uh, or your, this recent film from Brazil. Um, for, you know, your earlier Brazilian documentaries um, I, were, were very poetic. I mean, especially Rio Sonata, to me that is just, you know, what, such a poetic film. And um, but you know, this is a departure because you know, if 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 those are books of poetry, this one has a bit of the mystery novel in it. <laughs> and in fact, it's the first, probably the first time you've worked from um, another point of view, like using. So I'm really curious to find out how you picked this project, how you got into it, and um, what it was like. Yeah, I mean, after after meeting Maria Bethania and uh, Nana Kaimi and many other musicians through those films and Mar Martinho Davila, I, I saw I, I'm finished with, with Brazilian music. But I was still thinking and hoping to meet one day uh, Jean Gilberto and uh, Miusha, who was a very good friend of mine. Um, uh, she was her uh, husband of, of Jean Gilberto. She has a, the Bebel is a child from, from both of them. And uh, so I was all, all the time asking you, can you bring, I brought uh, some uh, gifts to bring to Juan and try to meet him finally. Because for me, I'm more from, uh, I was born more with classical music and Bach and uh, Glenn Gould and that kind of music, this pure music. Uh, I grew up in this. And, uh, and Juan Gilberto was a kind of uh, pure the pure, the maybe the essence of everything. And when I came first in um, in uh, in 2003 in Brazil, I I met uh, Caetano Veloso and I made an in interview with him and I asked him, I don't know everything, nothing about uh, Brazilian music. Please tell me what should I do? Who should I meet? And they said, first of all, you have to understand why Juan Gilberto has such an influence but the, the Musica Popular Brasileira. And uh, so I was, he warned me already in 2000, 2003. So I tried maybe 10 years, 13 years, trying to meet Jean Gilberto. And um, yeah, without success. But one day I was in Berlin and I discovered a book from this German journalist who tried also to meet Jean Gilberto um, and uh, so I, I opened the book and I read the book because I want to know how he was trying to meet uh, Juan. And uh, yeah, and later on I discovered that he committed uh, suicide a few weeks before the, the books came out. And then my 
I was very curious to know what what did happen. Did there was any relation with with uh, with his search and uh, uh, did he found Juan or not? And then all the story came came out like that. Yeah, it was it's a bit complicated uh, story. Yes, and um, also the, you know it's the first time. I mean, it's always interesting when a uh, a director puts himself in as a documentary, and so this was probably the first time that. Is this the first time you put yourself? Yeah, 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 yeah. In, in all the film, you don't hear me, you don't see me. Right. But some, in the film of Marta Aguirre, I, I ask a question, we hear a bit of my voice, but usually I, I'm very, I'm, I'm too shy to, to, to go into the film and uh, it was not, uh, it was never been uh, really, um, uh, it was not something that was very, essential to the to the scenario of a film that I'm be inside now in in this film because the, this jo german journalist mark fisher he was um he was searching juan like me and so i i start to read his book try to find go to the step where he went people that he met and then met the same people but suddenly i became through through this game this kind of of, of game i became a kind of of uh, of Mark Fisher, and uh, so it was it was a bit uh, it was very strange at the beginning and and at the end I was very scared to be to be honest I was happy the film was finished because mm. I was very touched uh, I uh, sometimes people and many people told me uh, be careful don't 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 go too close to Jean Gilbert or maybe the same. The same fate will uh, fate will happen to you, uh, like Mark Fisher. So Juan Donato, for example, he told me many times, "Don't go too close to Juan Gilberto because he, he might have in, in, uh, in influence on your on, on your destiny." So and and Menescal, Roberto Menescal, who said that to uh, to, yes. uh, to Mark Fisher, yeah, and this is in the film. Um, uh, he said that to Mark Fisher, and, I, and in, if you read the book, uh, you, you will understand that it was a, it was a crucial, crucial moment in his life, Mark. So when uh, Roberto Menescal told him, "Be careful, don't get too close to Jean Gilberto. Maybe the rest of your life will be will be influenced by this by this moment." And uh, and I think Mark, in a kind, uh, he was very in, in another story. His life has changed completely, and uh, he was already someone who was between depression and in, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it was not yeah, it was difficult for him. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what was interesting. I thought it was must have been difficult for you to put yourself in his shoes because you're a very different person and. Um, First of all, you're much more of a karaoke than I think than Mark was. I mean, you you know you've you've been in you've been in Rio a lot. You know a lot of people, and so to see you in those hotel rooms so lonely, it actually hurt hurt me <laughs> because I know that's not really that's not how that's not your Rio, you know. Yeah. So I can see how that it must have been a little scary for you to um to you know to adopt that that role. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the film is uh, is done like a feature film. We we took the book and then we have choose some parts of the book and then we we wrote a book like like a scenery like a, really a scenario with a 52 scene clearly prepared and uh, so the film is really shot like a feature film and i became the, one of the main actors so yeah right. but you have to play yeah. the game but the game is my game is my my life I spend hours working, walking on the street in Ipanema and have a drink there, try to meet uh, Caetano, try to meet um, uh, Maria Bethania, call Maria Bethania, can I come to your home? Can, can we record something? So my life is like that. So you see me like that and, uh, and, and telling the story of Mark Fisher. So it's not, it was myself. It was not really a game. I was, I was, I, it's a it's a reality actually. And, I don't know uh, if the book is published in English. Is it his book? Actually, uh, not yet. I don't think so. Yeah. Not yet. But what I've been able to read, just you know, trying to read German and reading it in Portuguese. Um, I mean, some uh, reviews of the book. It seems that he was very. Mark was much more obsessed with the idea of fame and celebrity. Um, I mean, for instance, like you were searching for Joao because of 
Caetano said that that's the root of the music. Did, did Mark have that same passion or was it more like he was, you know, in love with just, uh, you know, because I know he did things on like Lenny Kravitz and Bork and, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mark was very intellectual. He was, uh, he was a journalist. He was searching things. I'm not a journalist. So Mark liked to, to get facts, to get information and, 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 he wanted to make a coup because uh, in 2011, I think it was uh, the year where, where a special year in the life of, of Juan and the, in the year of the Bossa Nova also. So he wants, he wants to read, to, to write the book, the book. And uh, so he has a kind of uh, yeah, honor to, to get that done and, and finally meet, meet, meet Juan Gilberto. Uh, so, but me, no, I, me, I'm not like that. I do documentary films, so I try to get close to people, try to get um, confidence, and and uh, they have to understand that I'm not, uh, I'm not someone who want to to get in private information. For me, the key is to is to understand the music, how the music comes out from the artist, and. And Brazil is such a, a rich country for that. I mean, you have you go there, you go in studios on the stage, you can hear things that uh, that it, it's 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 marvelous. It's an enchantment every, every time when I go to Brazil. Now it's almost seventeen years, seventeen years that I go there. Everybody, every time I am surprised. They surprise me all the time. Even I, if I know them, but every show are different, and uh, yeah, Brazilian music don't get old. No, and then uh, for me, what's so nice is that I love the connections between all the artists. Um, it's a, I feel like it's you know, there's a dialogue there between all between the different um, musical artists um, that doesn't quite exist in other popular music cultures in this you know in the same way, and the collaborations, you know, yeah. are, are so amazing. Um, so, you know, I, I've worked a little bit on biographies and documentaries, and um, I've found that when I start, you know, I'm, I'm like in love with a someone, and I, you know, and then as you do research, you go through many different feelings, just like in a real relationship, you know, you love them, you hate them, you like them. You <laughs> Did yeah. you go through transformations on your, on your two characters, both Mark and Joao, while you were uh, with the process, you know? Of course, you have uh, by working. Filming is 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 a is a heavy heavy machine to bring forward, and you have to have appointment. You have to shoot when when the crew is there, and sometimes they call you and not you are not there anymore. Or if you want to prepare something, you say I'm arriving on that day, and uh, we want to shoot on the day after, and then the, they say yeah, when you arrive, call me. Yeah, but it's not <laughs> like that. <laughs> And when you arrive, they tell, they, they tell, oh, very nice, you're here. How long are you here? Yeah, let's meet next Sunday. But it's Monday, so you have, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was a bit uh, always. But we find, we find ways how to get, to get out. And uh, you have to be patient with, uh, with Brazilian uh, people and with the culture in general. So, and I think Mark Fischer was not very patient. He was a German journalist. He wanted to get to the point. In, in, I, he went to Rio and in four weeks he had to meet Jean Gilberto. I could have told him that uh, it, it's not possible because I tried 10 years, don't, don't, don't hope. It's, it's, uh, it's, you should not have any hope like that. So I, should, I could have, have uh, um, taken care of him actually to say, okay, wait, come back and then maybe uh, go back to Berlin and come back and, and do three or, two or three uh, uh, traveling and then at the end you could you could meet uh, Juan Gilberto but um, so yes of course uh, three films like I did or four films it was a, a lot of organization a lot of clearance also the rise the music and the, the, the location the crew the equ equipment it's it's um, yeah it's 16 years of, uh, of, of work but I'm very happy because um, they give you so much Britannia is so, is so uh, generous, and uh, when she wants to give you, it's uh, like everybody on the stage. Britannia is someone that give you. So, mm -hmm. and, and the same sometimes with yeah with Nanakaimi. But when we we came in Nanakaimi life, it was more complicated. She has lost her father, and so it was uh, not a very good moment. 
and Martinho the same with Martinho Davila. It's um, it take you in, in his arm all the time. So at the end, you have to wait. You have to be patient, but uh, but the pleasure and the and the, the richness of the music is so wonderful so that you you can excuse everything. Uh, for me, I, I mean, I, I mentioned it earlier. I love Rio Sonata, and I I just feel like it's you know it's really a love a love poem or a love song that you made to Rio as along with uh, Nana. You know, you know, it's just like the filming in the different you know different times of day, and the, and the really really beautiful. And and I was not like a big fan of hers, but ever since that film, I, I felt, you know, fell in love with her like 200%. I mean, I just love, she, she's an amazing artist. And, um, yeah. you know, you captured, uh, you know, she's just this lady sitting there in her living room, but then like the, her depth and her, you know, she's, I, I found her to be amazing. Yeah, I, I show, I went once to, uh, to uh, Salzburg uh, in, in Austria to show the film to uh, an opera singer, about which uh, I did a film once uh, called um, Grace Bambri, a black singer, an uh, opera singer. Yes. And, and she, when she, after she saw the, the film Rio Sonata, Nana Kaimi singing, she said, it's good because when you film Nana Kaimi with your camera was so close, we could see into the, the mouth and the position of the tongue. And right. uh, very often uh, when I teach to my student how to sing opera, I, I try to learn them exactly how to put how to put the tongue, and she said, "Nana Kaimi do that perfectly." So <laughs> Nana could could sing at the Metropolitan Opera, maybe. So, so it was it was for me actually uh, to go in, and uh, I was also very interesting to bring to to build bridge between culture, and I could found in 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 Brazil a way to 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 go back to the to to the classical music with Nana Kaimi which like very much Debussy Juan Donato also like very much Debussy and and uh, and Maria Bethania she like Bach for example once uh, Maria Joao Pires the, the piano player went to uh, to Rio and they recorded together I filmed that so I have uh, I I could um, I know now the, the the strongness of the of of the Brazilian music because they get influence from everywhere, and uh, and and to to understand that it's it's it, it's a kind of uh, yeah it's a, it's like a treasure, you know you open uh, and uh, and yeah. So is is music your driving passion to to, to making films? Is it is it your love of music that, that because you you were making um. Uh, you were working for doing TV documentaries on film in the '90s, and then when you, then you started to make your own documentaries. Yeah. Yes, yes, I did a film about the BC, about uh, Pinkas Zuckerman. I went to to New York in in, in 1993 to to the music, music school of art in in Manhattan, and I recorded Pinkas, and it was it was such a wonderful. A moment to 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 meet all those people. Yeah, my my life is uh, my life is music. I, I wanted to be a pianist, but I, I, I then I did discover Marta Agersh, and I say, okay, it's better to do a film about her than to <laughs> yourself. You have to be <laughs> to be uh, honest with yourself. And uh, and uh, as things came forward, so I I love musicians. I love their stories. I love their, how they came to such. A, inspiration how they, they get from the world from from the situation from the the time uh, the all these this desire to 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 bring music to other people this is what uh, and and my camera should keep keep uh, keep that record that and and i try to in a special editing to bring that to the to the viewer yes mm -hmm. sometimes uh, it's functioning yeah well i know they, i mean you really have very successfully done that um, so I want to hear about your new project um, on Errol Garner, I think it is, right? Errol Garner, yeah. How you know that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah. tell, tell, tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, because Errol Garner, I, 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 I grew up with, with uh, classical music, I should like, and but I was not allowed to hear other things than classical music at home. So, uh, okay, I was playing piano, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, Sonata, and things like that. 
but when my my uh, my father went out from the house then i i heard the road gunner this was my 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 way how how to get some some freedom so it's my it's the music of my freedom of my youth and uh, that's a bit of my liberty this is really uh, my liberty and and Errol Garner is has a kind of uh, he play music like uh, like he, he's without studying it he's, he, he's just a genius who play music like he, he wake up in the morning he can play music and uh, very early in his life he, he could play music and you can feel that you, and in, if you see archive of, of him so he's a kind of arch archetype of the perfect perfect uh, musician, someone who, who, uh, who is musician, like Marta Agri, she is music. Mm -hmm. And uh, Errol Garner is, he is himself, his music. We, and you don't think about read notes or whatever he is when he plays something, he's, he's like a, the composer. So, uh, so after Juan Gilberto, I was traveling, but I, I tried many, already in 2003 to do a film about Errol Garner and about his music, wonderful. Many people don't know him, and uh, and I, has, I, I hope I will bring people to, to know him, to discover again his music and the importance of his music in the history. But I'm not a fan, it's not like, it's not to be a fan, it's, it's myself, it's me, it's inside me, you know? You grew up with some, with some music mm -hmm. that you, you are existing through them. So, yeah, that's... Uh, yes. And, and when I come to Brazil, I say, ah, now I'll do a film about the Royal Garner. Everybody were happy. Really, many people. And I, went, I was with a film of Jean Gilberto in, in, uh, in, in Buenos Aires and, and film festival. And uh, after the screening, and uh, someone came to me and I asked me the same question. What are you doing now? I said, the Royal Garner. Oh, people. And he said, I saw a Royal Garner playing in, um, in, uh, in, in, in Buenos Aires. Uh, in the in the big theater there. Oh, I can tell you. So many people, you know, you go around and uh, yeah, music uh, is is such a has such a strength. Yeah, this is how I want to express myself. Yeah, that's I, I totally now. And and in a relationship to that, I'm going to start to take some questions from the audience and uh, and from a visual artist, Ralph Gibson, who's a photographer. He um, would like to know, um, do you feel there is a visual component in music? And if so, do you search for it when you're filming? Yes, that's, that's interesting, it's, which is a complex, I don't want to make a visualization to, to bring, uh, for example, in the, in the Jean Gilberto film, the, all the, um, the point of views is, are very important. And uh, we don't have beauty shots, we don't see the... the, the we don't show the sea, the, 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 the waves and the, the trees just to make a, a kind of feeling. No, every, every shot show, you will know who is watching actually, if it's me or Mark Fisher or Juan Gilberto or other people. So it's something uh, in, in this specific film where are you Juan Gilberto, the, 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 the point of view is very important. So, and also I make some break very hard, which I never did before. The film of Maria Bethania is more like, um, like a composition, like a big symphony. You hear music from the beginning till the end. And, uh, and then you see people, uh, but of course I have, I, I, I have dream of picture when I hear music, but this is sometimes d dangerous because you have to to know what you want to show in in the in the story in in, in the in the scenario of the film, which is not the well in Rio Sonata of course you have you are very, it's a very romantic film you can it's so romantic. <laughs> so yeah romantic. it's yeah. no it's extremely romantic too yeah. much maybe <laughs> no uh, it's really the film for lovers yeah and um, <laughs> but uh, yeah I I think if I hear um, I can hear music when I have uh, emotion, yeah, and, uh, and uh, in the in the other way, I can see me picture when I hear the music, yeah. Oh, so um, Carlos has a question. He, um, and which actually I was a question for, um, I had as well. I'm curious about the number of films you made in Cambodia. What was uh, that? Was um... uh huh. 
Yeah, Cambodia is man, it, another country where, where I go regularly and I continue my filming there. I, I met a Swiss pediatrician, he was a cellist. And uh, in 1996, I went to Phnom Penh uh, and uh, I, I start to, and, and, and this pediatrician has built five uh, children's hospital, very fascinated, uh, a unique uh, humanitarian story really. And uh, so I did one film about uh, about him, and then I could, and he say I will build another one, and Gérard Depardieu will come and visit us, the hospital, and and next month I go to uh, the palace of uh, King Sianouk, and uh, I will play cello for him. Come over, let's film that. So, um, and it was a kind of friendship that became through years and work, and um, and the hospital uh, developed very much. And in the meantime, in 20 years, he has, uh, he has substituted all the, 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 uh, the system of health for children for one country. So he's treating 80% of all children in Cambodia. So I did one film and then a second one. It's like, in, like in Brazil. It's, I have two, two countries in my heart. And, uh, and, but the, the pediatrician, whose name was uh, Beatrice, died two years ago but i couldn't stop and then i say okay i can i cannot leave leave the story i have to follow up so i went back uh, many times uh, to to Phnom Penh and Siem Reap near the, the temple of Angkor Wat to continue filming to to see what's happening when he's not there anymore and uh, i was there in january february just before the lockdown <laughs> and we heard at that time oh there is some covid people in china a, a virus nobody knows exactly so i was filming and now i'm very happy to have this picture because now we cannot we cannot travel anymore i cannot come to the states also it's terrible yeah. well yeah someone's asking a question about um how you approach a film. So, you know, you've had the luxury of having, I mean, uh, not Zhao Gilberto, who, 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 who you didn't actually have physically, to, um, but um, your, the other three films, you know, you had, uh, the uh, artist was alive, you had got to spend time with them. How do you approach um, like a film on Errol Garner where you don't, where, you know, um, are you gonna rely on archival or interviews or what, you know, what's the difference way of working on that? Well, Errol Garner died in 1977, so a long time ago, so I yes. cannot meet him anymore. Right. But uh, usually, yeah, usually I go to the, to, to the artist and, uh, and, and try to, for example, Maria, Maria Betania, she saw the film of Marta Hagerich and she was so enthusiastic about the film that she said, if you want to do a film the same way as you did about Marta Hagerich, please do it. And so <laughs> she opened me the doors. And then uh, during the film of Maria Bethania, I, I met um, Nana Kaimi, and uh, and then I, did, I was doing a film about Maria Bethania, and then suddenly I was dreaming about Nana Kaimi. So <laughs> uh, it, it was uh, every, every, and then uh, du during the film of Nana Kaimi, I met someone else who introduced me to Ma to Samba, Martinho Davila, and and. So every film bring every film bring to an, to another one. It's uh, it's it's my life. I function like that, and uh, and now Erol, it was clear for me. Erol Garner, it's something that I have to do in my life. I have to do before 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 I will leave this this uh, this world. So yeah, um, yeah, we will work more with archive, of course. And some people are still living who, who were playing with Erol some musician and uh, yeah, or, and other people, yeah. Not there is some people, people left, yeah. Uh, so we have another question here. Um, someone would like to know what, what are your cinematic influences? And um, if, are, are you at all, are, are cinema, Brazilian cinema, one of your influences? Yeah, I saw, I saw many, many Brazilian film, of course. I, uh, of course, Brazil had the, uh, uh, a period of time, a difficult period of time during the the dictatorship, and uh, and then the, the cinema didn't have any money, so the, the 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 cinema in Brazil didn't really develop in that time, and uh, and took a long time to to recover, but now it's very strong. You can see very good film and uh, also feature film, and not only. Uh, 
and not only uh, a documentary film. No, I have uh, I, I follow very 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 well. Even if I'm not living in in Brazil, I have a lot of friends. I have to. But the way my film, uh, I try to make my film without influence from from Brazilian producer. Uh, all my film are. Uh, produced from Switzerland, Germany, France, for example. But I, I prefer to be neutral, not to to be influenced by by people who are in in the in the in the country. It's it's uh, it's really an eye from outside, uh-huh. and this is what I want to keep. This is it's it's very important. Uh, it's it's a kind of it's a philosophy that I want to to follow in all my film. If if I go to a, a foreign country. And um, yeah, Brazil maybe was a film that influenced me very much. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, let's see. Do you have, um, are there any other documentary, like a tradition of do- documentary filmmaking that you like, like any um, from other countries? Um? Oh yes, Christopher Newpen, for example, is someone that I, I watched very early in my life. He did many wonderful film with uh, Daniel Barenboim, Jacqueline Dupré, all those uh, and uh, there is many many uh, classical music film that I, I like. I I was very surprised uh, about the film uh, A Star Is Born, uh, the lady that uh, with Lady Gaga and uh, and I I, I didn't I, I I didn't thought I would like the film because it's not really the music I hear every day. So I watched the film, but I was very moved to be honest because it's very musically edited. And the story is very, it, it's wonderful, I think. I prefer the, the Lady Gaga film as uh, the Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. Even I, if I like, um, <laughs> I like the other music, but uh, yeah. But Christopher, I think Christopher Newpen with all this wonderful documentary influenced me very much. Would you ever think about making a, a music uh, video for an artist, a musical artist? Is that anything like that intrigue you? For MTV or what do you say? Yeah, for, you know, for, yeah. I mean, it seems to be so much, uh, film, you know, so much uh, video being made in the in the music world now. And I was just curious if it would, you know. No, not yet. I am someone who like cinema du réel, the direct cinema. You know, I, I, my dream is to catch moment that you cannot repeat. If to get, if if I can get near to an artist and he will give me something very. Unexpected, something unexpected, a moment very special in a studio or in private moment. This is for me the, the, the this is for me the my dream as a, as a filmmaker. Try to prepare. Sometimes it take ten years. Marta Agresh, it took me ten years, twelve years to get the the, the interview that I got with her, mm-hmm. and uh, and it was something that uh, that um, that had an incredible value because this interview nobody can do it. Uh, redo it because it was a moment. I think the the very uh, the important things in life is the moment. Mm-hmm. The moment you and me now I speak with with the audience. It's a moment. It's very sharing. Yeah, sharing ideas and not only ask uh, ask question. Actually, I don't ask question with, with nobody. I just. I just say how I feel and people and musicians tell me how they feel. And then we, we try, we, we, we start to communicate. Actually, I, my film is a communication. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to communicate. I don't want information. Information is boring. It's, it's, uh, you have to be an aware of that. Try to, for example, when I do an interview with someone, I, I try not to speak with this person before. I hide myself. I, I, I let the, the, the cameraman do the, the lights and the sound, put the microphone. And if I have to speak with those people, uh, I never speak about what I want to speak after, or maybe I don't know what, what I will speak after. I hide myself and I don't. Um, I met, for example, Nemato Grosso uh, for, for the film Samba. And uh, I never met uh, Nate before, so I went to his home and uh, and he wanted to speak with me. You know how, how are Brazilian, they'll bring you, let's, dr- let's have a drink. And I didn't want to speak with him. I just want, because the moment when you see in front of, the first time when you see, when someone see you and 
this is where things are coming out in the eyes, I think. And then they are surprised. Oh, what he's talking about? Ah, oh, oh, yeah. And then let's try. Yeah. So I don't try to do friendship before. The moment is the moment is important in my cinema. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sounds like music. I mean, it's sort of like a jam session in which someone's doing this, someone's doing that, and then you know, you, you get to somewhere else, right? <laughs> yeah, and be yeah. and be open to the to the energy because sometimes it's not the right moment where you can uh, speak about something. You you can you have to focus on, on something. It's like Dorival Caymmi, Dorival Caymmi, the, the big composer in, in Brazil. He said, "There is moment in your in, in life where you can. There is moment to eat. There there is moment to make a prayer. There is moment to 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 read books. There is moment for everything for love. And uh, but you you have to wait the right moment for the right things and not try to do it the contrary. And this is a good philosophy, Dorival Caymmi." Uh, well, one of the um, someone in the audience um, has a question about um, what was the most challenging aspect for you for, in making Joao Gilberto. Uh, yeah, I, I was at, at the end. I was really afraid that I will maybe commit suicide, something like that, because uh, I I tried to put myself in the in the life of Mark Fisher. And then I wrote, all the, the film is in, in Germany, as you have seen, maybe. And uh, so I, I, some part in the film, I re, I'm writing like the book, uh, some commentary of myself I'm writing. Uh, and I was surprised that I could write in the same way as Mark Fisher, suddenly. I got his vocabulary, I got his gr grammatic, his way, how he's, for example, the book starts like that. Oh, this is this is a tower. Is it? it is it this, the tower where he's living? Let's go and let's try to 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 catch him. And uh, and and suddenly I was I was surprised myself. I became Mark Fisher. So I was the film was edited in Paris more than a year. It was very complicated. And after eight months, we went back to Rio to make some shots. Um, shots <clears throat> that were missing, some really uh, cutaway shots, something like that, or connection, or new scene that were missing, and of course the meeting with Jean, uh, Gilberto, the hope to meet him, and uh, the door story, and all that, the Copacabana Palace, and uh, so we were editing in Paris. I went back to Rio. We went back to Paris, and I was I was writing the. the the text and uh, really I uh, to go in the street of Rio and I was thinking yeah I am I am really a Mark Fisher and Musha also Musha knew Mark very well and everybody knew the what did happen to him so so I mean, Musha, Musha knew uh, Jean Donato of course and so everybody were speaking with the others and George is in the middle trying to meet Jean will Jean meet him he, so everybody were trying to to catch Jean Gilberto it, it was a kind of a, yeah it was a, a story yeah, like uh, everyone's uh, they were very uh, I mean Mucha was very playful you know she is very funny and very playful about it um, and uh, Menescal that was you, you already mentioned that but that was quite strong you know what, yeah what he had what he had to say um, so a few people are asking how they can read the book. Um, read a, um, so it's available in um, Portuguese and German. And German. I'm yeah. very sorry. We, but I, I, there is maybe a, yeah, I don't know. I, we were trying many times to, 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 to translate the book in, 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 in English, but I, I, yeah. I don't know how to say okay. that. I'm yeah. going to take um, one more, uh, one last question, which someone's asking about um, in the film, uh, you allude to the fact that, well, or you, you, I mean, you're speaking about the fact his family um, was help. I mean, his family was very generous with you uh, in right in giving you some materials, and um, and at the same hand, you were very um, delicate and kind and respectful towards towards him. So, which I'm sure they they appreciated. But um, how did that? Uh, yeah, how how did that work with the family and 
Yeah, there was. It was not easy for them because to 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 lose a a, a child, the only child, uh, was very difficult. And uh, I came to them uh, just three years after Mark committed suicide, so it was still very fresh and uh, story. You cannot forget that anyway. And uh, at the beginning, uh, they were a bit suspicious. And, well, I give them all my film about Brazil music, so they understand my way already that I did. And uh, and they was thinking, okay, I think Mark would, would accept that you, you will do to tell his stories, his story, and uh, and uh, so slowly they they they, they get uh, they uh, they get um, trust uh, in, in in myself. And uh, at the end, I think today they are very happy uh, that the film, well, the, well, the film took me almost three or four years. So, but at the end, when they saw the final, the final, I showed them the, the uh, a cut, which was not completely finalized. They were surprised and the mother uh, told me, yeah, she was very, very moved because she never, she didn't really understand why Mark, how it did happen and whatever. And I think the the film speak about that, mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, but I I must say uh, to come back to the question before I I must say that I, I became also in a very difficult moment after after the film was done. I I was happy the film was finished, and I was happy to go forward to to do something else. Right. Um, yeah. It was so. Errol will mm -hmm. say. <laughs> Errol Garner, we saved me <laughs> again a, a second time in your life, right? <laughs> he saved yeah. you when you were when you were a kid, a teenager. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess on that, um, we're going to end the conversation, and I want to um, thank you so much <laughs> for joining us from from Zurich, and thank you so much for all the films. And um, I'm so glad we got to meet in Rio, and I'm so glad I've gotten to. Um, and I, I'm going to make. I would like to show, even though it's not Brazilian, I'd like to show the Errol Garner film when it's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will take three years maybe. It's, it's yeah. always very long. Yeah. Making film is a complicated uh, way, yeah. And yeah. you have to be sure. And because it takes so long time, you have to choose really clearly the, the thing you want to, to, to. You have to, to really play. love it, right? To, in order to, yeah. yeah. So for any of in, in the audience that's seen, watching the talk and hasn't seen the film, you can um, still watch it this evening and tomorrow. And, um, and, and, and also, I, you know, hopefully we'll be able to bring, I'd love to bring some of the other films back again, because I, I feel like, you know, all the films, uh, they're so important, you know, to see, these artists are so important. And, I, and I'd like to show films more than once. So maybe we'll have a, uh, a festival <laughs> of your... <laughs> Anyway, we'll, I, I hope to come soon back to, 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 the, to New York and to, anyway, I have to, to, to continue my film right. with Errol Garner and uh, it will be my pleasure and I, I thank you very much to invite me <laughs> Great. To, to speak with your audience and thank you Mary, Mary Jane and good luck to your festival. Anyway. Great, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Ciao. <laughs> bye bye, thank you. Ciao.